So uh, hello everyone. Uh, the I hope everyone is uh, healthy and they're doing good. And uh, let's start with the with the session now. Uh, we already have the sufficient audience. So uh, the this session is particularly particularly about the building Microsoft Logic Apps and what you need to basically consider before uh, started or before implementing the logic app, what point you need to consider, what are the best practices? Actually, you can adopt it. So this will help you out uh, later phase of the project or later phase of the implementation that you will be not running out uh, with the bugs or maybe not running out with the out of uh, out of thoughts that okay, how we can actually do this because uh, somehow we haven't learned from the previous experience or the the recommendation we implemented something wrong and now we are struggling with that one so i will cover most most of the things uh, what even i have learned by myself uh, with my peers uh, while implementing the logic app projects or uh, maybe some of the different mvps from this uh, this uh, stream so they guided me um, earlier as well and they discussed with me on some of the scenarios that okay how we can actually uh, overcome this kind of the situation so let's start with that i will start um, a brief introduction from uh, my so uh, my name is ambesh singh and i'm the dynamic 365 architect and the technical manager currently um, in the kpmg deutschland and I worked for the different organizations and the, with the different teams. So basically, miserly, I worked with the Microsoft for, for a long time and I worked with the MSN, Bing and the portal teams like the product teams. Apart from that, I worked with the electronic arts in the gaming domain. I worked with the PSN view and currently I'm the ambassador of the 10, uh, 365 Saturdays as well. So I'm, I'm conducting trainings and the other valuable um, stuff for the community. So let's start with this that um, I would say what all the session objectives that we are going to achieve at the end of uh, 50 or 55 minutes. So because um, the session meant for the L100, so I'm not going to say um, or, or not going to speak more about some more technical aspects or more depth in that. So it will be on on the normal level so everybody could understand. And um, but you are feel free to ask any of the question if you have and if you have the expertise, you are you are struggling somewhere. I'm always reachable to you. So at the end of the session, the agenda is that OK, if you are moving out from the from this lobby and um, from the next day onwards that uh, if you have a thinking or you have a thought to implement the logic app, then you don't need to start from OK, where, where I can start it? What is the logic app and what all the things I need to consider before implementing the project? So this these kind of thoughts should not come to your mind. That is the whole sole agenda of uh, or the objective of the this particular session. And uh, in terms of the topics, what we will cover it in next uh, 50 minutes. So basically um, we will cover about more or less about the logic apps that what is logic app and why we need to use the logic apps, um, how it's internally work and um, where we can build it, which is more important um, with some references which will be very useful for you and uh, followed with the Q&A session. The topic actually uh, best practices. Uh, most of my session will be uh, target for the, targeted for the best practices. So I will not talk much about that. OK, what is logic app and those definition, but definitely I will talk more about OK, what are the limitations we need to consider it before jumping into the logic apps? What are the points we need to consider it? So this kind of this kind of um, things definitely we need to we need to learn. We need to remember when we are going to implement the logic app projects. So uh, the first thing is um, that I need to know, OK, what, why, how and where about the logic app. So as per the Microsoft, if I will uh, go in their words, so as per the Microsoft, that Azure logic app is a cloud service uh, because it's it's definitely it's available on um, the Azure platform and um, which help is which help us actually to schedule, automate and orchestrate the task, the business processes and workflows whenever we need to integrate uh, uh, our applications the data, the two systems or the multiple systems or the hybrid systems and the services across the enterprise and uh, the different organizations. So that is somehow the logic app 
in the layman, if you will ask me, I would say uh, in a simple word that this is one of the one of the offering from the Microsoft or the cloud that you can actually automate your stuff. You can integrate it and you can do a lot more apart from that. Then um, the second question is actually um, why we need to, why we need the logic app. We have the different tool. We can write uh, so many applications and there's there's a complete world is open. Then why only the logic app? So for me, actually, um, I would say like like any of unlike any of the Azure offering, I don't need to bother about okay where I need to build it, how I need to host it, and um, about about the scalings, how I need to manage, how I need to maintain, and do I need to hire a resource to just continuously monitor for that one? So these kind of the headaches I don't want it, and that's what the logic apps come. So logic apps actually handle this all the concerns for for you. And apart from that, which is really important, you need to pay what you use it. So you don't need to pay what you are not using for. So this is really important for that. And how internally it's work. So it's unlike any of the application or uh, any of the uh, programming language that how any of the programming language works. Uh, you have a scenario where the trigger will generate. You need to capture those. So uh, event there's an event handler and then you need to write a methods or the building blocks what you need to achieve when something happened logic app is perfectly working in the same fashion so that is more about the what why and how and the most important thing where you can actually build it so it's very unlikely uh, like a flow so flow you can actually build it even with the mobile uis also but um, but definitely with the with the web portals also the same with the logic app. So logic app you actually can't build with the mobile UI. There's a reason for that one. Maybe I can cover that later on. But uh, the most important thing is uh, apart from that, that in the particular logic app scenarios, you can build it definitely on the web browsers. But apart from that, you can build it on the Visual Studio framework as well. And there's a specific reason for that one because this logic app is more and less meant for the developers like the pro developers or or the the people who actually have uh, the knowledge of the basic development, so it's not like a business creek or um, the citizen developers that they are gonna and just drag drag and drop a couple of things and they just build the nice and beautiful flow or the power automate now. So I hope uh, till now everything is clear. If anybody have any question, they can just ask me. I'm I'm open with the questions also. Hi Ambesh, this is Jatin. Uh, well, I have just one question is that uh, it looks similar like the Power Automate, but what are the major differences and uh, where should we use what? Uh, if you can answer, please. Yeah, sure, Jatin. So um, the thing is that definitely your point is totally valid that this all the things actually I can do in the Power Automate or the flow, previously flow also. Why then still I need a logic app? So my first answer is, that logic app is a kind of the big brother for the flow. Because um, in the flow also, internally, the the engine which is serving all the purpose is the logic app. So logic app is the engine for the flows or the power automate now. So this is the one thing. And um, as you know, that logic app is as a cloud-based service that actually enable us to develop and deliver integration integration solutions with ease, right? And it also help us to build, schedule, and automate the process as a workflow. So we can actually integrate apps, data system, like as per the Microsoft, we can we can integrate a lot of things. However, Microsoft Flow or the Power Automate is a SaaS offering. So Logic App is the platform as a service, but Flow is the software as a service offering. And you can do again, like you can automate the workflows uh, with a growing number of application nowadays there. And Microsoft is really putting a lot of brain and the uh, money into that. So you will get um, basically um, the SaaS offering and the and the platform as a service, the PaaS offering. So this is this is the basic difference in 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 both of uh, the tools or the offerings. The second thing is what is your target audience? So which is really important because flow are generally meant for everyone. Everyone can go and just make their hand dirty there. Logic app is not likely that one. So flow, you can like if there is a SharePoint administrator, they have the access of the flow. They can go and build the, the nice flows, the office employees, the business user, the citizen developers. So anyone can go and build the uh, build, build the flow. Logic app, I'm not saying that uh, these people can't build it. 
partially yes but it's more meant for the developers so it's not only for okay because there are a lot of things are required inside you can actually um you can you can pass the json inside you can write your own um, payloads there so there are there are a lot of more offering for for the developers also here and the second thing is definitely the business scenario so if your business is purpose is very easy flow is the best in, for for that uh, situations but if you are really looking for the ad, advanced integrations uh, workflow in your business to business like the b2b environment then i would say logic app is the solution for you and um, as i told like the, the another difference um, regarding that the the tools from where you can develop definitely both of them you can develop it via browsers flow you can develop with the mobile apps like if you've got some error you can quickly just open on the mobile and then just fix it and deploy it logic app you can't build on the mobile so for logic app you you need a uh, you need a web browsers like the portal.azure.com uh, and apart from that you can also build on the visual studio personally and uh, honestly i haven't built uh, the logic app over the visual studio because eventually i, I found that okay um, browser are much convenient to me so i can do a lot of stuff there and i haven't realized that okay i need visual studio for anything sometimes i yes if i need to compare few things i will i will tell you in the in the subsequent uh, slides but uh, technically i i didn't uh, I didn't had a feeling that okay, I need to open the Visual Studio and just set up this and start the development from here. And um, apart from that, actually, uh, you know how to reach to Flow, like now the Make dot Power to Meet uh, Power Platform dot com or the Flow dot Microsoft dot com. But for the Logic App, actually, you need to go for the Portal dot Azure dot com. And um, apart from that, there is a licensing plan as well. So Logic for for the business, um, sorry, sorry, for the Power to Meet, actually, you you just need a separate uh, licenses like maybe the office 365 or something but for the logic app actually you need to be part of the integration accounts of the azure because you need you are meant for the integration for the different products here so you definitely needed that one so i hope this is pretty much clear then there again like as a pricing also there's a lot of difference that okay um flow run on flow actually you need to pay on every run logic app works differently a bit you need to pay um, definitely on the runs but it's more centric on the triggers and the actions and the other parts also we will probably cover later in the in the pricing session but um, this is probably high or less so uh, the difference in the flows and the logic app offerings and in short if you are looking for the complex situations or the complex integration scenarios logic app is the answer if not then you can achieve most of the things via flow okay so i would move to the next slide then i hope this uh, answers your question jetin thanks Abish. okay no um I need to start like uh, the to implementing the logic app. I need to start the project there. But uh, how I can start it? That is the first question which comes in probably everyone's mind. And um, the answer for this is actually uh, like unlike any of the programming languages, you need to document this. So the image on on this particular slide is not very much related with the logic app architecture or something. But um, I would say it's more uh, related with how you need to build any of the product, product X, Y, Z, any of the product. You need to create an outline. So it's more likely you need to create a technical design documents or um, you need to write your cases accordingly or complete business processes. So why I'm saying this? Because what happened, like you got a requirement, okay, we need this, this, and a second, please. Okay, sorry for that. So um, you always think it about before development that okay, um, you need to document it. It will not help you while implementing this, but later on also when you will go in for the supports or for for the enhancement for that one. If you don't have a documentation, it's really hard for any of any of the product to to just sustain um, for the long time. You will always get into the trouble, especially when your team will change or something. And um, that's what uh, uh, the, my first recommendation is. Don't directly jump and just drag and drop. But before it, document it. Maybe use the Visio or some other tools that what you want to achieve via the, via the Logic App and pass it to the, to the implementation team and they will just go through and they will start developing on the base of that one. 
which is which is really important. Now, uh, which is probably the the important topic the topics that the pricing model. So you we have the two kind of the pricing model available here uh, for the logic app. One is the consumption based pricing model and second one is the fixed pricing model and um, how it's work actually. So in the consumption based pricing model is pretty clear that OK, what you use it, you need to pay for that one and that one only. You don't need to pay a single penny or single cent additionally to anyone. Very unlikely the fixed pricing model is basically meant for the integration um, like uh, integrated environments and uh, you have to pay um, the particular amount even if you're using it or not using it. But um, for for that consumers, I, I I hardly found uh, most of the most of my colleagues who are into the fixed pricing model. Most of them are using uh, the consumption pricing model only. So what they are using, they 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 or their customer are need to pay accordingly to that only. So this is uh, basically basically the the difference into into to this. So consumption pricing model is basically for uh, for our uh, multi talent, and the fixed pricing model is basically for the integrated service environments. Um, then uh, here I would uh, give a pause on the slides and probably I would um, show quickly um, how to create actually logic from the UI perspective because if I will go like um, by slide by slide, it's really hard to actually connect what I'm talking here and what you have actually available in the in the portal. So let me just quickly uh, pop out my browser here. A second. So uh, like you need to log into the portal.azure.com here, which should be pretty simple. You can go to the home and from here you can create a new resource. I usually prefer to go to the resource group and it started from from there. And the reason is actually because uh, I need to develop my all of this stuff related with that uh, that resource group. I don't want to just jump here and there in the multiple resource groups, which may lead the problem in future for me. So I usually try to prefer create a resource group. If you have any customer, or if you are doing for your own organization, create a resource group for that purpose and start your all, all the development because then you can actually logically connect all of your parts. Like if you have connections uh, from, from the SharePoint, if you have a connection from the SQL, then they all are stored in, in that particular resource group instead of here and there and easy to maintain. So I have uh, already one of the resource group. I would go there. And uh, here I have an option to just uh, add few things. What I need to create it and definitely I just uh, I'm looking for the logic app. You just need to type it here. And here you go. So you need to just uh, click on the create. There are a few documentation available. You feel free to go and just check it out. And uh, you need to give the logic app name for that one. So an example I'm doing for for the customer just in say. Microsoft. And I'm doing this for the teams or maybe um, a Skype. Team, then um, the next one is probably what I want to achieve it. So I want to just uh, create. Probably. Ready to. In AX from something like that. So why I'm trying to do this? Um, because your name naming convention is really important here. If you name it like Logic F one two three or something like that, it's really hard in future to to maintain this because. Uh, it's it's really confusing for the other guys if you don't follow the naming convention here. So then you can actually at the last you can put it and it's again like it's there is not hard and fast rule that how you need to name it, but it's it's your own preference. I usually put the dev test or the production. So if anybody's seeing from from the naked eyes, they don't bother about OK, this is the test one or the dev one or the production one with without going um, to the connectors or the triggers. And you just need to review. And create. 
that's all. So your logic app is created here. And after creating of the logic app, it will take around 30 seconds to, to one minute, and then it will deploy everything for you. You just need to go to the resources. This is somehow the UI look like for the logic app. So the moment you will go to the resources, you will fall into the logic app designer view. And currently it is blank. I have so many connectors available here. So it's probably more than 100 connectors or so many enterprise connectors, standard connectors are there. Eventually you can create your own custom connectors also and serve your serve your um, like the requirement. Uh, for now, I just take a blank logic app. So it will give me a blank template and I will I, I need to start it for my own. So I'm just looking for the trigger point. So just suppose I'm just looking for the dynamics. I have a dynamic 365. I need to select the trigger and here basically when I need to trigger this logic app. So I'm, I'm taking a, a scenario. OK, if my if the account is getting created, I need to send an email to some of the distribution list. OK, this account is created in the CRM, so they should know. OK, something something is happening in the CRM without um, going every time to the CRM instance. So this is this is one of the scenario just for the testing. So an example if the account is created, so I can just take it. But here if you can see I have a when account when a record is created and the second one is again when a record is created with the preview. So preview is is basically like as any of the Microsoft offering they give us for the for the general audience or the developers to use it to if they found any bug they will fix it. But um, there is no recommendation probably even from the Microsoft as well that you need to go with this preview feature uh, to the production. So even that is not my recommendation. So if you are really looking for the production in the next one or two months, I would not advise you to go with the preview feature. It's always recommended to go with the stable versions. For now, I just took this one and here basically you need to select your organization. So suppose you have a 20 organization, you can select any of your organization. Um, then you can select off any of your entity available here. So just just for this, maybe um, um, just selecting the account here. This is really important part that OK, when your logic app need to be triggered. So definitely it's a it's a pooling system. So when our account record will be created, it will trigger. But the moment you will create an account, it is not going to run it or execute it. So it work in a, in a more more fashion like pulling. So an example in the current scenario, every three minutes it will go and check. OK, how many accounts has been created and then it will execute those all the accounts here. So this is somehow you can actually do this for now. I'm not going to save it. I will just uh, keep it like that because I have already um, one test or the demo uh, logic app up and running and I can just go through from there. So this is somehow you can actually create the logic app and um, the next important thing like uh, you can still do all the things from the from the code view also which I just talked it for me personally. It's it's really hard to understand the code view. It's much complicated and if I have offering to create anything from the designer, I don't want to just go in a code view and write everything for my own as simple because I need to just build it as as quick as possible. I think it's pretty clear now and if anyone have any question till now uh, they may ask me like how we can create it. What are the different parameters we need to consider till here so I can answer. If not, then I probably move to the next. Phase. OK. So what we were talking about like uh, if you if you saw in my demo earlier that I just created a, a first block. I selected the organization, then I selected a, um, like a, the entity, and then I selected, OK, uh, what would be the interval and what would be the frequency for that one? So those things are basically triggered that when my logic app need to be executed, in short, the first step your logic app. So your first step of your logic app is always a trigger. So basically logic app offers the three kind of triggers. You can go for the pooling, webhooks or the recurrence. Uh, I will give you a very short um, description for all of them. Like the recurrence is basically the schedules. So you need to run your logic app every 12 o'clock at night or every weekend or maybe every month and for some cycle 
uh, salaries or the the bonus calculations so these kind of the triggers or the schedule triggers are basically the recurrence triggers the second one is the webhook so webhook uh, i just need to call my logic app immediately for any purpose maybe i'm calling from uh, my logic app from the from the other environment it's not the, the dynamics or not the the dot net maybe from the java in that case i just need endpoints and webhooks are basically kind of uh, the http request is one of the example so i can create the http request based triggers and webhook is the example for that one so it will immediately got triggered so uh, immediately it will serve the purpose for you i will show you uh, maybe in one of my demo as well and the pooling trigger is again the important aspect that uh, which i just created it it wait for a couple of uh, duration or the frequency what you set it there and it will then go and check the pools whatever the data or records are available it will come back and execute all of them so this is basically the three basic uh, trigger points for the logic apps okay so uh, going forward, like from uh, the slides, uh, I will talk more about the limitations and the configuration information for the Azure Logic App, which we always need to consider uh, before planning, before implementing it. So we don't want the situation, okay, we did something and we are blocked because we were not aware about that one. So uh, personally, I don't want uh, to trap on those situations and I should know my product or offerings well before we, I'm going to for, for the implementation. So I would start with the definition limits. So if you can see, um, it's it's more like a table. Like we can we can all read it. That um, I can add till 500 actions in my logic app. I cannot add 500 first action in my logic app. So you will get an error. And if you really need, because um, I created a uh, logic apps integrations, and um, honestly, I do require more than 500 actions on some complex situations or the integrations of the products. And in that case, you can actually plan it in a better way, or you can um, divide your task into the different logic apps and call it from the main logic app, or maybe from one logic app to the another. So the, there is a parent-child relationship kind of this stuff will work. The same like any programming language that you have one method, from one method you're calling the second method. So you don't want to push everything to the one method. It's, it's most likely the same here. So we can always think it about this before starting. And I just use the word like parent and child. So it's more like a logical. There is no technical parent or child work, uh, logic apps actually in, in, the, in the offering. So one logic app is almost identical as a second logic app in terms of every pricing, so functionalities and everything. It's most, mostly it's a logical stuff. Okay, you treated one logic app as a primary or parent and the second is a secondary or the child and, and so on. And any of uh, like uh, the nesting of any of the actions basically. So you can go till eight levels. Ninth level, you can't go. I will just show after the slides that what I meant for. Um, you can actually declare 250 variables per logic app. There's a 25 switch else, uh, sorry, switch cases blocks. And please uh, remember that default is again, a, a default is a, handles or the case block but um, it's also count one so technically 24 switch cases plus one default and um, you can write uh, 8192 characters per expression not more than that um, name of your actions or the trigger could not be more than 80 characters the length of the description field could not go beyond 256 characters and maximum parameters you can get it or uh, you can um, like output as output, it, it will go like a 50 and 10. So you, you can't go beyond this limit. I will just quickly go to the next slides and more talked about the run duration. So in the multi-talent, which I just talked about, like consumption based model, it's a 90 days. You can retain the run history and the storage for 90 days. Very unlikely for the integration service environment, um, it is uh, hopefully it's 365 or 360. So because in few documents, documents I also saw the 366 days, but it's most like a complete one year. And uh, the minimum recurrence interval should be the one, one second, and the maximum recurrence interval can go till 500 days. So this is again one of the important aspect. Let me just again quickly jump to my logic app and uh, just show you that what I meant for this one.
So uh, this is one of my logic app basically. This is uh, the edit mode for that one. So I was talking about the uh, trigger points. The first step is always a trigger. These are the variables. So basically I just um, declare the variables so I can declare till 250 variables. That is the, the stuff. Um, then the description fields or um, the variable name, it depend on, on you. Uh, that what you need to give again you need to follow the naming convention but there is a limit for that one so always remember that and you can actually also go and put the comments comments are really important because if you have more than, like if you have more and more steps it's really hard for the other person or maybe even for you um, going going forward that uh, you probably won't understand what you build it in that particular scope or the blocks so comments will help you in that case. It's it's like any programming language. When you build something, you always give a comment in the starting of the function or starting of the, the classes. This is one thing I talked about the depth. So an example, uh, I have a, I have a one block here. Uh, this is the, the second one. So this is probably the second depth. I go more deep. This is the third depth. If I go more deep in that, this is the fourth. And in this way, I can go till eight levels. If you really need to go more than that, because honestly, believe me, there is a situation and um, I encountered the same kind of uh, situation where I need to go more because of some logics. So the best scenario is you can actually create uh, the, the child work and the child logic apps and you can pass it parameters from here and then do remaining calculations there. Okay. Then uh, I would probably move to the to the next slides and I would more talk about the trigger uh, trigger concurrency. So it's unlimited when your concurrency control is turned off and it's by default when you enable it, it's set to the 25, but you can go from one to 50. What does it mean? So quickly just go back here and here actually uh, an example. I have a for each loop. So in a for each loop, how it's work because you know like I've now everything is working in a thread based uh, in an asynchronous process but i if i just want no it should not go in an asynchronous process um, i'm sorry for that it need to go one by one like in a more iterative approach i could go to the setting and there's a concurrency option available for me it's available for for every um, iterative objects and actually i can enable or disable it so by default, it should be 25. You can go till from 1 to 50, and it's it's more depend on, on your requirement. I honestly, I don't want to change anything personally because uh, until as there is not any uh, specific requirement. So if there is any sp specific requirement, definitely I would, I would go ahead and change it. I would show in the demo that, okay, what I meant for and how it's work later on. Uh, very quickly, the next one. So uh, basically it's it's uh, the for each array items like there is again a limitation that uh, there's a hundred thousand uh, limit for the for each. If you are really going beyond that, like an example, if you're reading a large SharePoint list or probably rows from the Excel or maybe um, the SQL tables and you, you are expecting that your record will go for more than hundred thousands, then you can you could go for the query actions instead of the for each loop. So there is always an option available for that one. And um, your basically wait, uh, your maximum waiting runs uh, in the concurrency, if it is on, then it could be go from 10 to 100. It's, it's again depend. So this is one, and then I would talk about the HTTP limits. But um, before that, I would go back and show you the concurrency stuff that what is uh, I was uh, what I meant to talk about. So I would go on the run. So as I told you, like you have the two views, you can go for the runs, you could go for the designer view. So there's an option available and you can see the, the major commands on the top itself. So I'm going on the run and probably just open one of that. So I would come here in a for each.
OK, this didn't run it because of uh, I would show some successful one very quickly because that is step didn't run. Uh, the previous step was failed, so that is step didn't execute it. Uh, maybe I can check this quickly. Let's see if it is executed those step correctly. So this is basically on the left. If you can see these are the run histories and it can retain up to 90 days and to retain it. Actually, you need to pay to the Microsoft for the storage. So that's why it's very wise that OK, um, you, you really need it for the 90 days or you need more more than that one. So what I took it actually, I just took a variable called increment and I was incrementing from one to the another one. And if you can see here, the increment is going from one, two, three, four in a, in a more sequential way. Just take it here and here you see where I just turned off the concurrent. So because it can go in, a, in, a, in any fashion, you can't bound it for a sequential fashion. So it start with the 15. Then if I go to the next loop result, it go to 11, then 12. So it's it's more like a non sequential list uh, based. So this was I was about to talk about uh, the concurrency. It really help you when you are doing some kind of the increments or the decrements uh, in your for each loops for some specific uh, purpose or the logic, then you need to consider about these points. Uh, we can actually call the HTTP from your logic here, which as useful like um, because it's more meant for the integration. So I just call the one of the HTTP request from here and uh, I just pass the URL to there and it gave me the result for that one. So this the previous slide is basically about the HTTP request uh, functionality. So just quickly go to the and just check. So you have few options available here when you are dealing with this kind of scenario. So the pagination is, is very much like um, if you need to just send the chunks in the page or not. If you open uh, the secure input and output on and off, like turn on and off, you probably will not able to see the result in the run history. So as I told you, like here I can see, OK, what was the output? What was the, the input for that one? You can see everything here as an input and output, but if you enable this you're probably not able to see the inputs and the outputs those those will be um, the disable and this one is really important the asynchronous pattern so in the asynchronous pattern as you know like um, there's, there's two options like the synchronous or the asynchronous call especially when we talked about um, the services or something so by default it's a uh, synchronous you can make it to the asynchronous as well and actually um, you need to decide it so if you are um, like in, in one of my situation when i was working for some integration i need to read the values what i posted it like i i i created some record i need to fetch the record id of the created record and i need to make some operations on the base of that one and it was failing continuously because it was it was not behaving the way it need to be expected. The reason was it was asynchronous. So maybe I send the three calls from here, call A, B, and C, but it's not guaranteed that I will get um, the result also in the same same fashion. So the result could be the B will come and the C and then A, and it was complete, completely destroying the the requirement of my um, my application. So we found that okay you need to just in the loops basically when you deal with the loops or the uh, there is some calculation based on the result of the outcome of this http request you always need to go in a synchronous and then make it a like a concurrent one so you always go one by one definitely it's more time taking but there's no other option for that one and asynchronous when you don't need to do like it's pr probably hit and forget so you need to go and update something and you are not dealing anything after that then asynchronous is the best option for that one like any programming language. Um, apart from that, um, we have the timeouts. So the slide which I was talking about is a timeout. There's a default uh, value for that one. And apart from that, you can actually go and customize that. And the next one is the retry policy, basically. So if something something is not working, 
by default, Logic App will try for four more times, uh, especially with this error, like 408, 429, and any 500 error. But if you really need to just uh, configure it, you can you can actually go and say, okay, no, I don't want the default one. I maybe need a fixed interval. So every uh, for every this duration, I need to go and check it on every this interval. So it, it means on every five minutes, it will go and check it till next 20 times or something like that. So that was exponential is more and less related with that. But again, you can go with the minimum and the maximum intervals and none. OK, if something goes wrong, if these errors come, don't proceed. And I don't want to just retry again and again. Please remember if you are making your retrace, uh, act, like because this is the action and action will perform the uh, perform the stuff. Per action run, you need to pay something to the Microsoft, which is uh, very minimal, but you need to pay. So always consider that you really want to make a exponential like maybe 50 hertz or retries or something or not. OK, back to the slide. So uh, the previous this was I, I talked about like the 122nd it would uh, go and check for the on ongoing um, and the synchronous request. Um, one GB data actually it's go for the message uh, message with chunkings. If you really um, chunk it like if you're downloading any, any of the files you don't need to download in, in one go, maybe you chunk it and download it for multi talent um, or the consumption based model it's a one GB, but um, for the like integration service environment limits the five GB, and you can again go and configure it. Like you have the uh, you have the possibilities available. Retry attempt is by default uh, four, which I talked about. You can go till ninety. Uh, retry max delay you can set it to the one, uh, which is which is uh, again like it's a configurable. So max delay you can you can delay your retry till one day. Okay, if not working today, maybe just go and check it next day maybe you are picking some of the sharepoint list and on the on that list on the base of that list you need to perform something and the list is not available in that scenario you can hold the logic up maximum till one day and the minimum minimum delay is probably on the five second so if you if you are hitting something and if something not working you can't just hit another in one second so minimum delay it's the five second and how you can actually configure this retry i just uh, explained to you in the in the logic app OK, we can go very quickly. So we actually can create the custom connectors, which is probably one of the beauty of the logic apps. And um, you can you can create till 1000 per Azure subscription, those custom connectors. And regarding the execution of those custom connectors, there's a limit that there should be just 500 requests per minute uh, per action. Sorry, per connection need to be triggered accordingly. So this also this point also you need to consider. Now, the next important thing is um, I shown you on the logic app. There's a just let me quickly go to the here and here you have a two option. One is the delete and the second one is the disable. What we need to think it about it, what we should know about this. So disable and delete by name it shows. OK, uh, it's, it will delete it and it will disable it. The more important thing uh, beyond the process, if you are disabling something and some execution are already in the pipelines. Those will execute before disable it. Delete, as you know, it will delete it and then you can't get it back. So these are the two things which you really need to consider. The another important thing actually what we encountered when we were working and when we started with the logic app a couple of years back that uh, uh, we were building something on the logic app on on some uh, some entities. And there was a test team who imported maybe more than 10,000 records via the Excel import and the record is created and our trigger was on the record create and our logic app started running. So we found this, we stopped this and we told, OK, if someone is like as a practice, if someone is importing or doing something, please circulate our email. Next time they did it right, the circulators, we disabled it before they, they went it, but the problem is occurred after that. The moment we enabled after this, we found OK, whatever they imported, it imported in the in the instance, CRM instance, it's it started execute, executing for all of those imports. And we was we was surprised, uh, surprised. OK, what happened now? Because we disabled it. It's it's working in the same fashion. Even if we will disable it, your runs will run because it's create a pool and you disable the logic app runs, but you can't disable the pools there. 
the work and work around solution what we we did it i'm not sure like um, if someone has an idea that how we can do this the I'm, I'm really happy to know that one but the work around what we did we changed the connectors so we changed the connectors when someone was importing um, and I told you in the trigger point, there's a connector where I usually need to choose the instance and I ideally need to choose um, the, the entity. So we changed it, saved it, they did it their action, and we again change back when we really need to start the, the next process or next development on the top of that. This is somehow we we handled it. If there is other solution, uh, probably currently I'm, I'm not aware about that one. OK, so this is more and less related with the disabling and the deleting logic apps. Very quickly, I will go naming convention. I explained to you it's really, really, really important. If you are defining something, please define it because if you add any of the action in the logic app, by default, it will take an example. If you add uh, send email, so send email will be the first action name by default. If you will add another another action with the same name, it will be send email to send email three and it will keep going like this and you will not have any idea okay what the send email one to whom he is sending the email what situation is sending the email so it's always good to to please follow the naming convention especially with all of these uh, steps actions variables because later on there will be a problem and what problem i was just talking about actually um just an example let me again quickly go to the logic app and just show that if you create a, you already define something as a name or or um, as a description, you can't change it actually. Uh, an example here. So here, if you can see, I cannot rename it right now. And uh, why I cannot rename it is but lo but logical because probably I was using this variable down. So it's not like a Java code or the C sharp code. Okay, you just open the Visual Studio or the code editor. You just select it, rename it, and everything will be fine. So here, there is a limitation. The workaround solution, if you really need this in the future, if you forget to release something and you need to rename it, you can go to the code view. In the code view, copy all the code, paste it in some editors, and change it whatever you need it from there. And again, come save it here, and it will work like that. That is the workaround probably for that one. So you, you technically, you cannot change it from here, but yes, there's, a, there's an option that you can always go to the code view and change it together where it is getting referenced or where it is declared every place is. But we really need to be focused on that one because it's always risky if you change anything in the code view, uh, maybe some typo or something, then when the moment you will come back here and save it, it will it will not allow you to save it or it will create a problem in future if you are not very focused about that one. So I, I already explained why you no one can rename it actually if it is already referred some somewhere and how you need to handle it. You need to go to the code view and change it from there. Um, can we create a local versus global variable? Technically, there is no local and the global variables in the logic app. You can just declare the variable at the root level. You cannot declare in any scope or any for each or something. You need you can reuse it. You can again set it, but you cannot declare it. Uh, clone functionality. OK, this is again one of the, the important stuff. So. I have an option here. On the root, I can clone it. Why it is more important? Suppose I already went live with one of the one of the logic app, app and I need to make some enhancement on the there. Definitely I would I won't prefer to make the changes in the same one. I would clone it. I would make the enhancement and I would pass it to the testing team if they will say OK, I will clone like in another name and then I will replace the production one. That is probably uh, the best idea to achieve that one without the downtime. So you can clone it and you can start your development there. The next iteration, the next level, and then you can you can work there itself. Please remember if you're cloning this, all of your connections will also get cloned. So if you clone on the account trigger, account entity trigger, then cloned one will also start triggering on the same one. So if you are doing something like on account of CRM creation, you are creating a account in the business central, it will create a two for you. Which is you really need to consider about that one. The next important part is. Um, timeout, so as I told like timeout is really important. You don't want to just uh, run your your HTTP request or some something maybe for each for forever. So you can go and set the timeouts. OK, if it is not 
giving result for this duration. Please stop it and and proceed it and handle it later on in the code. How you need to deal with the synchronous and the asynchronous request. I told you you have the you have the buttons available. You can just enable or disable it and you can achieve. Concurrency control I already explained initially. Try fail, try again and success like it's more like uh, if something got got failed, there is no retry option available in the logic app that OK, you you actually configured it and if this logic app failed, it will again execute to check it. OK, if I'm, I'm getting passed or not, this is not available. So what you can do it actually, um, you can configure it like you can design the the your, uh, your application like that. OK, if something is getting failed, basically, so I need to I need to make at least one retry in that case and uh, how you can actually do this. I'm just taking a quick example here. So I did a try in the try. I just have uh, one HTTP calls. I passed it. So if something got failed, I came to the switch. I'm checking the status code from my um, from my this request. If it is 500, I can go to the 500 and I can make one more retry. And if it is 200 or some some other status, I can actually go and proceed my work. So this is somehow you can build it to to retry it. OK, so next uh, really important things, uh, especially when you start with the logic app, please save, save, save every time whenever you can. There are the two two important things for that one. The first is definitely if you if you are doing something, and you forget to save it. You went home. You come back to the next day. Your session expired. Everything will be expired. What you've done. It's there is no automatic save for that one. And the second, which is probably as a developer is more important for me. Saving means it is compiling the code for you. So you saved it. It compiled. If there is any error, it will tell you immediately. OK, there is something wrong with this block. What you just developed it or what you are doing it. If you did it, if you are not saving it, you are doing a lot of stuff in, in, in one go. And later on, if you save it, you found OK, there's a compilation error. It's really hard to find it. Um, you will just get a message. OK, you, we can't save because of this, this, but honestly, you will hopefully you will get an idea, but most of the time people don't get it. Why it is failing and then you need to roll back everything, which is really like annoying in some situations. OK, I, I just talked about the rollback, how I can make a rollback here. So again, you need to go to the home. And like uh, any repository, we have repositories here as well, so you can go to the version. The the latest one is here, so you can't promote it, but you can open any other one. And here you will get actually uh, the the offering that you can promote again as a live one. So you know, okay, um, I was uh, I was working yesterday. It was perfectly fine. It was up and running. Today and from yesterday since today there is there was a lot of change and I don't know why it is not working. So you have an option immediately to go and promote that build. Definitely you will lose the changes, but at least you will get your workable code. And preview feature I just talked about like um, I'm not good fan of release the preview features. Uh, related stuff in the production environment, but I'm at the same time very good fan of to at least explore or take a deep dive that what the preview feature is offering for me because most likely it will convert from preview to the general availability. Uh, data type I talked about uh, in the logic app, so if you declared any of the logic app here. So just very quickly, let me go back to the logic app in editor mode, so you just select the logic app. Overview. And now I can go to the edit mode and the edit mode basically um, in. Logic app you can declare variable as I told and the variable count uh, uh, the variable data type should be out of this only so you cannot declare the another variable so you need to use the predefined variable what is available for you here. Uh, P code again one of the important things so an example of why this kind of functionality is, uh, is important. From the P code again, you will get a, the site of the code. So the good part is um, that you can see, OK, what is this code doing or something? So this is the small block and this is just a trigger, so it's it's pretty much fine. But the problem is when you have a large blocks with this with the with the scopes, with the try catches, there's really hard to find uh, 
by just clicking and going on and seeing on the same screen. You can pick the code, you can check it because probably you are from the developer background. You can easily find out the, the reason for that one. The bad part is actually you can't change any code on the peak code. So you, it's not something you open the code and you change it and save it. It will not work. You will not get the save option there. You always need to change. If you really need to change it from the code, there's only one way you need to go from the code view. OK, we have two minutes left. Um, configure run after. I will explain this for, for now. I will just uh, skip the slide, but I will explain more in the practical way because again, like Logic App don't offer you the try catch and the finally blocks like any other languages. You need to design it. So if something is getting filled, it captured properly and run it. Logic App from complex requirement, you always can create the child workflows. Child again is a, is a logical but not technical stuff. So this is the another stuff um, which is we already covered. Um, we can actually see the logs. Um, I will show you that as well in one go. Um, high throughput is, is again in the preview feature, so you can actually um, get maximum result from from your logic app. Like it can run very concurrently, maybe so many so many res, um, so many requests they are just serving in in, a, in simultaneously. You need to just enable it, but uh, it's again in the preview, so you need to always consider about that one. Um, this is I talked about the retention policy of the run history. The default is. Uh, the 90 days you can go to the custom and increase or decrease it from 1 to 90 it's up to you um, i would always go and prefer the advisor recommendation which is available at the point of uh, my resource group very quickly i will uh, just show you here the try catch how we can build it so you have a try you have a catch and finally so if something goes wrong in the try it will come to the catch otherwise it will directly go to the finally you, what you need to go if you are creating the cache block, you just need to go to the configuration run after. In the configuration run after, you just need to check, okay, if previous step has failed, then one day do this. Otherwise, don't do this. So if you if you have something bad in the tray, it will catch it. Otherwise, this step will be skipped and it will go to the next step. Finally, block how you can actually do this with the same configuration run after. You can go and check, okay, if the previous six, because it needs to be run every time. So if previous is successful, has failed or is skipped, you always need to run this. So this is somehow you can actually build the try catch and functionality, try catch functionality. Advisor recommendation, actually, as I told you, like you need to go to the, to the, uh, very quickly, uh, your, resource group level and here you will get most of the things like the cost management monitoring and um, here is the advisor recommendation i would prefer to use this initially it was in the preview but now it's uh, it's available and you will always get um, some clues from the microsoft uh, machine learnings and the other tools that okay something is not good or not secure in the logic app or your keys or something and you can actually configure that one so these things also you can you can do it actually here um Practical implementation, I just want to show you here. So an example, I'm just going to create a new account, which can be um, Microsoft Corporation, and I just save it. So as you remember, it run on the save of the newly created account, and I saved it. Uh, let's go and check how it's work in the Logic App. So very quickly, I would go a second. So we are already out of time, but I will not take uh, like more than two, three minutes. So I can see here like my logic apps executed successfully. What all the inputs come, how it performed. You can always go and check um, each of your logic as logic app stuff. OK, what's come as input, what went as an output. The important part here, what I want to tell you that uh, you need to design something like this that okay uh, there is a logic app run id i configured it why it is important because i need to capture this on as a first step and if something goes wrong i need to send it via email or maybe i need to just store it in some list or somewhere in my finally block that or the cache block that every time uh, if something goes wrong i have this run id why the run id is important here because suppose you have thousands of the run here, most or of, most of them are failing or not failing. It's really hard to find the appropriate run from there. So if something got failed, you can't come and see, okay, um, yes, definitely you will get something is failed, pass, but what exactly um, on, like an example, on creation of the Microsoft 
corporation account there is a logic f field but what logic f will be you can't see unless you are not going and see and opening every logic f every field logic f so it's good to pass the the run id and just just i copied it so my run id is this and i can easily come and see search in the list and go and check it okay why it's failed or something like that apart from that i just uh, i just emailed the logic app uh, related stuff that i just use one connector for the outlook and i say okay logic app executed recently for code acquire uk with run id something or something like this so you can get it and you can just uh, directly go and see the errors as from the admin perspective. OK, so you will get more information from these links. You can actually uh, it's it's very useful and a lot of information available here. And now I'm open for any of the questions and answers. If anybody have, I would be happy to answer that one very quickly. OK, no worry in that case. So you actually always uh, reach out to me uh, via Twitter or via the LinkedIn and ask your queries. We can discuss more about I can if I can, I can provide the solution. If not, then at least I can uh, provide you the connect correct contact who can help you out in that case. So you can always reach out. Um, you can actually fill out the survey if you have done uh, in any of the session previously, so you can go and fill out the survey here and it's it's good. Um, you will get a lot of stuff from there. And I would say thank you everyone for attending this. And always reach out to me in case of any of the query you have. Thank you. <laughs>